All right. Welcome, everybody. This is Reagan Archbald, and uh, really happy to have you on the show today. We're, we've got some fun things we'll be talking about. Um, it is uh, heating up, and man, there's been a lot of great things going on in the world of regenerative medicine, longevity. It's never been a more exciting time uh, for me and my practice. There's never been a more exciting time, and I believe just in life in general, uh, there's there's so many things that we have to look forward to, uh, so many great you know inventions and uh, amazing things that we can do to maximize our health. So so today in the in the podcast, what I'm going to ask you to do and in the show is is um, you know type in any questions that you've got as we go through this. Happy to answer those. And then um, I'm also going to uh, invite every single one of you to just make a new commitment. Yeah, when it comes to your health, say, what, what do you want to do a little differently? And if you, if you can go back and, and listen to our last couple of shows, we talked about the Fitness 50 tool. Um, we're going to be recording some videos on that. So that will be available soon to our community. Um, we also uh, have been uh, talking a lot about this, these mindsets of aging. And last night in our Health Accelerator Challenge, uh, we went through some of the cool mindsets that... Uh, you know, our, our, our collaborator, collaborator, collaborative partner, Dan Sullivan uh, talks about, which is uh, the age reversal mindsets. And so just to give you an overview, there's 10 of these and uh, they're very interesting. And so, uh, you know, I, I'd certainly, you know, kind of rate yourself and see how you're doing, but, you know, mindset number one um, is better sleep, exercise, and diet. So how many of you uh, could, you know, have more, uh, more restful sleep and wake up with more energy. And how many of you are exercising in the, the best way possible? And this is where in our, in our Accelerate Wellness program, the first 60 day reset is getting you to exercise, you know, 60 minutes a day where, you know, 30 minutes is going to be more maybe weightlifting, high intensity interval training, and then you're going to have another 30 minutes of stretching, walking, running, swimming, whatever you love to do. Um, but that's that's mindset number one. Mindset number two is quarterly test based pro progress. And so, you know, we don't want anyone to die by surprise. We don't want death to sneak up on you and say, hey, by the way, you've got, uh, you know, uh, heart disease or cancer or uh, diabetes. You know, one of the reasons why we're so big on testing is because if you're not testing, you're playing guessing games with your health. And, and I, I think that we can all uh, either look at our own lives and, and recognize times when we've been caught by surprise uh, when it comes to our health. But not only that, I'm, I'm sure we have people in our life who've been caught by surprise, you know, like both my, my mother who was diagnosed with cancer, um, you know, 25 years ago, uh, and she's doing amazing now. So I'm really grateful for that. Or you think of, uh, my father who, you know, he was literally 10 feet from death. He had a, you know, heart attack when he was uh, at, at Cade's uh, motocross race and Cade's Cade's out today. So I'm, I'm, we miss him, but, um, but yeah, so that's, you know, these, this is why quarterly testing, but, but your physical, your annual physical, uh, is not enough. And those tests were put together in like a hundred years ago, almost like the 1920s, 1930s, and they've evolved a little bit, but not a whole bunch. So, um, so we need to get better at testing. And this is where we have our Avexia quarterly, uh, tests, and it's, it's your blood work. We also do metabolomics, which lets you know any upstream interferences. So if you've not ran uh, metabolomics, it's a very important test because from that, we can look at mitochondrial dysfunction, uh, which is essentially the mitochondria is the powerhouse of your cell and, and you know, it it's determines your energy. So if your energy is not where you want it to be, um, definitely get the metabolomics. And we, we like to do uh, metabolomics, uh, gut testing. Uh, and then we also uh, want to look at your adrenal stress index. And there may be some other nuanced tests that we'll go into, but, but you want to do quarterly blood tests and then kind of biannual uh, testing your metabolomics, which is mitochondrial dysfunction, oxidative stress, toxic burden, the uh, omega fat profile, and then methylation. And then uh, we'll want to do your, your comprehensive gut 
pro protocol, and that's a you know a stool test, which is everybody's favorite. Um, but that stool test will let you know if you've got uh, uh, how your pancreatic enzymes are working, your beta glucuronidase, you know, your ability to break down uh, hormones and and conjugate estrogens. Uh, we look at uh, all of the infectious agents, your dysbiosis. Um, we will look at to see if you're breaking down fecal fats and uh, also look at overall healthy growth of bacteria, yeast, and then check you for worms, for parasites, all those fun things that we all have in our gut. But getting the, getting the gut test twice a year is really critical. Getting your blood test every quarter and then looking at metabolomics twice a year and then an adrenal stress index twice a year, which is a salivary based test are really important. So that's mindset number two. Mindset number three is the fitness 50 at age 100. And that's uh, the tool that I created with Dan Sullivan, which we're doing the classes on tonight. Um, and so you'll soon have those uh, available to you. But essentially, go back and listen to that podcast because there's some, some very key things that you can be doing right now to see and predict um, how old you are from a biological perspective or how young you are, I should say, because we're, we're shifting our mindsets to uh, this, this uh, longevity perspective where we want age renewal every year. And, and every year, uh, you want to be seeing that you are getting younger and younger from a biological perspective, because ultimately, if you can reverse aging, you've reversed every single chronic disease that is known. And that's one of the big promises of uh, the emerging medicine. And this is, you know, one of the things that I, I've loved in, in my career, you know, coming from an Eastern medicine background is the emperors were always looking for the elixir for immortality. And, and so that's, uh, you know, it, it, it's no, no, no small feat to uh, find that. And uh, all his uh, physicians at the time would look at uh, all the ingredients in herbal medicine, in, in uh, animals, uh, you know, the organ meats. Uh, there's just some phenomenal breakthroughs that happened 2,500 years ago where people were, you know, there's, there's reports and we don't know how accurate they are because, um, you know, obviously of birth certificates and death certificates and, and record keeping wasn't always as accurate back then as, as it is now. But um, there are some pretty good documentation that shows that, you know, and there's some uh, ancient uh, Chinese cultures where it was not uncommon for people to live into their 80s and 90s and even hundreds. And there's, you know, maybe tall tales, maybe not of people living into their, uh, you know, 120s, 130s. So uh, right now, the oldest person on record was uh, uh, Jeanne Clement out of France. Uh, she was 122 and a half when she passed away, according to her uh, baptismal certificate and a death certificate. And so that that was pretty exciting. I believe she passed away in 1996, some, somewhere in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s. But OK, so mindset number four is create a what needs fixing checklist and and so this is where I want to ask you right now, are there areas of your body that aren't functioning optimally? And this is, you know, it's no different than going on a trip into the desert and you say, well, my check engine lights on in my car, but yeah, I can still drive it. So it's okay. But how many of you have, have just kind of normalized the lack of range of motion or the arthritic knees or the hips or the back? And and you've just learned to live with it. But you know what I found with pain is it's like a slow energy leak. Last, last night, we had the uh, awesome experience to meet with a couple of our pain intervention doctors and, um, and then our nurse practitioners and the entire team in the South Jordan Clinic and, uh, integrated pain specialists. And uh, we actually did a training on neuropathy and using some uh, novel device to turn off that pain signal to basically scramble some of the messages in patients who have neuropathic pain. So if you've had, you know, felt back surgery, if you've had uh, neuropathy, um, you know, if you've had uh, any kind of uh, ridiculous pain like sciatica, there's some really amazing uh, treatments that we are now bringing on with uh, Dr. McKenzie, Dr. Uh, Shante McKenzie, 
um, who's uh, going to be working. Uh, she's she's already working in our our ASC on Saturdays, but she'll also be uh, working out of our South Jordan clinic on Mondays. So so make sure if you've got things that need fixing, um, get those fixed, and then come in. And if you know if it's time to get to a nice rejuvenation, a cellular rejuvenation, uh, you know that's I I like to do stem cells on myself every six months, and I've done that for uh, a decade. I think it's probably the most impactful thing as far as fixing my body goes. Uh, you know, I can't think of anything else that I've done that's been as impactful. And so, you know, think of that on, on, on your list. What do you need fixing? Because uh, the problem is most of us, we wait until things are too far gone. I remember a, a patient of mine came to see us and, uh, you know, she, she was a little bummed out because she said, oh, my, my insurance won't cover regenerative medicine. And I said, no, unfortunately, your, your insurance will pay for uh, invasive surgeries, expensive medications that don't fix the problem. But, um, that, you know, they'll pay for those things, but they're not going to pay for you to get things corrected. And um, so she put it off and uh, she actually slipped on some ice and because her knee was so degenerated already, she had, you know, all three compartments had some level of deterioration in her, in her knee. And, um, and then she, uh, it was, it was unstable. I said, look, you're at like stage three between stage three and stage four osteoarthritis stage four is when you get, you know, osteophytes and bone spurs and that kind of limits your range of motion pretty substantially. Um, I said, now is the time to do it if you're going to do it. And she said, well, let me, let me think on it. And then unfortunately she slipped on ice, ended up getting a total knee replacement. Uh, I saw her about six months later and her, her knee was just red and swollen. Uh, she was having a reaction to the uh, prosthesis, had to go get it replaced uh, because not only was it the wrong size that they put in, they soon she found out it was too big. They, the, uh, the surgeon, that's all I had to work with. By the time he went to fit it, he said, well, uh, we, we, we can't wait. We don't have another size. And so she had to get it redone. And then she came back and we actually, we saw her that six month mark. And uh, we ended up doing some regenerative medicine around the area that was damaged. And, and then that was what finally uh, got her into a healing response. And, you know, her biggest regret was she did not take care of things sooner. And uh, I think there's so many things in our life and, and I would, I would look at this, you know, from, you know, in your, what needs fixing checklist, this is not just, you know, your physical health, but think about your relationships, you know, what are some things that would be really important for you to confront? You know, my wife and I, uh, we, we constantly, we try to have weekly check-ins where we say, okay, how are we doing? Where can we improve? What's working? What's not? And um, express appreciation for each other, gratitude, love. And, um, and, you know, I think that's where you start with that most important relationship and then work downstream and figure out what needs fixing there, what needs fixing uh, as far as your mindsets go, how many of you get stuck in these uh, negative patterns, I know I do, I have to work on that all the time, but, but it's interesting if you can go back and say, okay, well, if I can fix my relationships, and I can free up my time, I start looking at at creating some uh, better time to take care of my own health, and that takes care of everything. And then I can start taking care of my health. It feels a little less daunting. And so um, mindset number four is create a what needs fixing checklist. How many of you have a few things that you could probably get corrected right away? <laughs> and sooner rather than later, you'd love to not have that nagging pain. Um, okay, number five is expand your age reversal networks. And so this is interesting because these age reversal networks are uh, really powerful because you want to start connecting with people who are passionately committed to growing younger. And, and that's, you know, as, as Dan Sullivan, as he shared this with us, I said, man, this is such a powerful concept because, you know, so many of us, we have these relationships with people who are, you know, they're basically at the sunset of their life. and they're, they're ready to go. I, I had a, a, a patient come in yesterday who I hadn't seen in two years. And he's actually, yeah, I guess it was two years. Um, he said, I just kind of, uh, he said, I hunkered down during COVID and I haven't been out. And 
And he uh, seriously looked 10 years older than when I saw him. He said, I haven't been taking care of my health. I just kind of, you know, I retired. He'd, uh, you know, had a very successful law practice and he, he'd uh, retired. And, and um, I'm, I'm telling you, like, you, you, you've got to keep your, your mind invigorated. And so um, we'll get to the retirement thing. But, but one of the things that keeps us excited about life is, um, you know, having networks of individuals who are really on a, on a mission to grow younger. And, and this is a skill set that we're learning. Um, and, and you've got to be the CEO of your own health. You've got to say, look, I, I really want to maximize what I'm doing in my life. And uh, I want to be surrounded by those people who are doing the same. They have the same ambitions. And, and so uh, that's the beautiful thing about our amazing community here is, is we've got uh, uh, you know, not only the people who work within our organizations, uh, East West Health, uh, Integrated Pain Specialists, and our Go Wellness doctors, um, but we also have uh, amazing people in our community outside, and you guys bring in just so much innovation, uh, technology, so many great insights to help us be better at what we do in helping you. So I appreciate those of you who are you know, listening and those of you who are here because you are part of my age reversal network. So um, I love that. So anything you can share, we're always open to it. Okay, mindset number six is uh, freedoms of time, money, relationship, and purpose. And I've had Dan Sullivan on, on the podcast, and we've gone deep dives into this. And so, uh, Shani, I don't know if you can, you know, if you find those previous episodes, but uh, maybe you could post that, or if you guys get a chance, go back and look for, uh, you know, Dan Sullivan's uh, appearances on the podcast. He's been on multiple times, and we'll have him on again soon to talk about this. But, but this is really important because, you know, uh, if we have freedom of time, then you have time to take care of your health, and and you you have to make time because we all have 24 hours in the day, seven days a week. And um, this freedom of time is, is really critical. I find I get the most time back when I take that hour in the morning to meditate, to exercise, to eat right, to get my um, meals ready for the day. Um, it's all really important. Um, freedom of money. You know, the financial security is one of those things that gives us a sense of well-being. And so, you know, one thing I've been uh, really working with my daughter at is, is helping her understand how money works and finances work. And so she turned 18. And so we got her a, a little credit card. And so, uh, you know, she's like, you know, tr going through and what does it mean? I've got a balance and the, you know, and, and it's really nice to see that if I can give her the skills so that she can take care of for her financial resources, then she can use her money as a resource to fuel her biggest asset as, as she gets older, um, which is her health. And so it's, it's a really important thing. We all kind of had, uh, you know, we, we had this promise in, in the United States that if you had an insurance card, you're guaranteed to have your health. And so we thought that, okay, we can bypass the investments in our health, and we learned very quickly um, that you know what what insurance does is it mask it gives you the ability to mask a symptom, get medications, or basically get medicine that's you know about seventeen to twenty five years behind the research. Um, but if you want to get a front row seat to the most innovative, uh, most impressive medicines around. Most of this is not covered by your insurance, but however, the treatment, the Navarro treatment is what it's called, where we're, we're working with nerve pathways, um, that's actually covered by insurance. And there's a lot of things that we try to do uh, for the pain treatments that, that are covered. But when it comes to regenerative medicine, anti-aging medicine, um, these things, unfortunately, are not. So, um, so this is where, you know, having that freedom of money is, is really important for your future. And I invest a lot in my health every single year. And I feel like it's the best investment I could ever make. And um, no matter what my friends tell me about crypto or whatever uh, <laughs> investments there are out there. So, so the next freedom of, is relationships. How many of you have amazing relationships that you're happy with? They satisfy your life. 
Um, I think that's a, uh, you know, the most important thing in life. If you read my book, your healthy self, that's, there's a lot about those relationships. I talk about my grandmother and how uh, inspiring she's been to me. Um, my teacher, Dr. Mayakawa, my mother, um, and then all the, you know, my grandfather's and dad. I mean, there's just so many people in our lives that inspire us and help us do amazing things. And then that freedom of purpose. And, um, you know, Greg McEwen, uh, he wrote the book, uh, Essentialism and Effortless. You know, he asked the question, and when it comes to your purpose, you know, are you making things harder than they need to be? And so I think when you're living a purpose-filled life, you'll notice that things are actually, you're, you're infusing your, your energy and, and your genius into something that you're creating that will help so many people. And that's what will feed your purpose. But if you find that you are, you know, you're making things harder than they need to be, then you're being pulled away from your purpose. So that's one of the things you can look at there. Okay, number seven, avoid retirement minded people and thinking. I think we covered that pretty well, you know, and as I shared, you know, a couple experiences, but, you know, remember retirement is not, it's okay if you're like, hey, I'm done with my career. I'm not saying that, but but don't ever let your mind retire. You know, you always learn new things and then find great ways of getting involved in a community, whether that's a church community, you know, you're working as a volunteer for an organization, or you want to come and use your unique talents, but not have that same level of stress you did when you were, you know, in your professional career, but, you know, you use those to uh, serve an organization or other people or your family. These are really important things, but um, and, and always cultivating new hobbies, new passions. This is where uh, reading, uh, you know, I did about a year where I read two books a week and it was just a, a fascinating year, but it was almost too much to process. So I've slowed that down uh, somewhat, but, but I mean, even just learning new things from books is so exciting and meeting new people. I was invited to the Da Vinci 50 um, this, uh, uh, you know, group, the Da Vinci 50 and invite only group. And it's, it was in Sundance last Friday. And, uh, it was really neat because we have some of the world's leading, uh, doctors, researchers, um, thinkers in the longevity space, like David Sinclair, Rhonda Patrick was there, Aubrey Gray has been there. Um, all these, these leading researchers, but, uh, you know, the, the thing I loved about the people in the group is they have a fascination and this uh, amazing vision for life that you don't find any other place. And so, um, you know, I think it's the mindsets that really drive that home where it's like, what can I do to ensure that I have great health, not only five years from now, but 10 years from now or 20 years from now, because every additional year that we live, we get that much closer to finding those breakthroughs that will really transform our entire life. And, and what's exist today, I'm so excited about. I mean, not only can you 3D print now, we can 3D print kidneys and hearts and livers. And we're doing that in an animal model, but pretty soon there's no reason why we couldn't have, you know, replacement parts that don't require you to be a bionic human and, you know, basically robotic, but we're literally, we can use stem cells to regrow things that have been damaged. So, um, but you're not going to want to do that if you're around people who are throwing in the towel in life. So, so that, and this leads to mindset number eight, stronger brain, heart, muscles, lungs, and bones. And, you know, I think this mindset is really tied into what needs fixing checklist, you know, create that checklist and then say, okay, what do you want to do for your brain? I know the intranasal stem cells that I, that I've done on my brain have been phenomenal. Not only was it the, the fastest way that I took my kind of spun out ADD brain and calmed it down. Um, but the other thing it did is it allowed me to, um, just really start seeing things from a whole fresh new perspective. And, um, the night after I had the procedure done, I was, you know, basically, uh, uh, feeling like, holy cow, I slept about 11 hours, but it was like, I was reviewing my entire life and my brain was just being organized. It was almost like putting files in the right place, similar to having a desktop where you have all these projects open and then you just start sorting them into, you know, the appropriate, 
uh, categories. And that's, um, that's what I've seen happen. I've seen, uh, you know, people have a re- phenomenal breakthroughs as far as uh, being able to articulate better, walk better, um, have uh, greater levels of confidence, reversing uh, addiction uh, behaviors, addictive behaviors uh, towards alcohol or other drugs. Um, just some amazing things you can do for your brain with the heart. I know, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, one of you on here who, you know, I mentioned her before, but holy cow, she just, uh, you know, she got a letter from her cardiologist and her cardiologist said, uh, you've no longer got heart failure. And um, so that's what we're going for. We want to remove any risks. And Ruth, I can't wait to have you out here. That's going to be so fun. Uh, Your brain is just going to get lit up. You're going to love it. So um, she's excited and I'm excited for her. Um, The other thing, yeah, getting the heart. And this is where exosomes have been really phenomenal. Thymosin beta-4, one of the treatments, uh, has been phenomenal. Um, The other thing, you make stronger muscles. And if you go back and listen to our, you know, shows just a couple of weeks ago, um, listen to the one on protein and, and what your muscles really need to grow and why it's important that you have good muscle mass. And those, the, the muscles in your body, it's not, they're not just for show. Yes. It's, it's great to look at your muscles and, and appreciate them, but, but really the, the muscle mass on your body helps with insulin sensitivity muscles, create glutamine, which is a key, uh, amino acid for your immune system. Um, not only that, but they'll support your joints, uh, support your cardiovascular system, everything. So muscles are the also the most insulin um, dependent system in your body. And they're the first thing to get dehydrated. So if you get sore muscles a lot and cramp muscles that cramp, you're probably dehydrated. So, uh, and then lungs, you know, think about in, in Utah, we have an inversion, we have inversions and we have them in the summer and the winter, a little bit in the fall and spring. Uh, winter seems to be the worst because if we have tall mountains around us and right now they're just gorgeous. And I'm, I'm so excited because uh, next weekend we've got a go wellness event and I tried to plan it. I usually, we do our events kind of around the spring and fall equinox and then the winter and summer solstice. But in the winter solstice, we have to go early in December. We always do it the first weekend in December. But I try to plan this summer one right when Utah mountains are the greenest. And, and so uh, it, it's looking beautiful here. But, but when you think about your lungs um, for you know, capacity, this is where ARA 290 has been a phenomenal peptide. I've been timing myself. I just turned 44 on last Friday. And so I've been looking at you know, what's my next challenge? Every year I give myself kind of new challenges. So last year it was, you know, the year before was ice baths every day. Then I had exercise twice a day and it just changed everything. My energy stayed better. I didn't have the evenings where I wanted to, you know, you know how it is if you don't get outside, even if you exercise in the morning, I don't know how it is for you, but when I would get home after a busy day and I'm mentally fatigued, um, I would say, well, let's just eat dinner you know, and then you want to drink wine and then you want to have a little dessert and just kind of, uh, you know, relax in parentheses. But what I started doing is I said, well, instead of doing that, why don't I just create some more time for myself and I'm going to go and go for a run, a mountain bike ride. I'm going to do something outside for 30 minutes minimum. Usually it ends up being about an hour. Um, my wife will always say, did you get lost? I'm like, well, maybe because Um, I'm a bit challenged uh, directionally and I like to take, you know, I don't like to plan things when I go out. I just want to be in nature. And so, um, but I found that that getting out um, just changed everything because I could connect with nature and I do that every day. So um, that's phenomenal. Um, So uh, that will help your lungs. um, And then, you know, making sure you're improving your cardiovascular fitness. If you have any issues on the lungs, emphysema, um, if you have uh, cystic fibrosis, get those things, put that on your checklist and then reach out to us because we have some phenomenal treatments for the respiratory system. I mean, breakthrough treatments, not only with nebulizers, with regenerative medicine, with peptides, there's so much you can do. And what we find is that when you have issues with your lungs, you're going to be having issues with your gut. It's called transmigration of bacteria. And so uh, get those things fixed. And then 
the bones. This is where getting a DEXA scan twice a year is so critical. And then hopefully at some stage we'll have a DEXA scan here because then we can see uh, muscle mass. Uh, we'll be able to see if, you know, how uh, symmetrical your body is as far as strength goes. And then we can see the quality of your bone density. Um, and then mindset number nine is be up to date on breakthroughs. And by plugging into this show, I can tell you that we have some of the most creative thinkers in our community. And, and each one of you share so many amazing things with us, like, like you do, Ruth, all the time. And so, um, so share any insights that you've got. And, uh, and then I'm always out there in the, in the scientific field. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to where I have uh, a lot of amazing um, you know, world leaders as biohackers, uh, researchers. I mean, we've got Mike Caruso, Justin Kirkland in the peptide field, Elliot Spencer, uh, Bob Hariri uh, in the uh, in the regenerative medicine uh, landscape. We've got Buzz Korth. He'll be coming out. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Jessica Johnson. I mean, we've got so many amazing people who, um, who keep keep me up to date on breakthroughs, but also you guys are, you know, you're, you're plugging into that here, but, um, but I think there's, there's something to be said about making sure you're keeping up with the times. It's easy to kind of stay stagnant. I, I noticed that at the Da Vinci 50, one of the things they're talking about is how stem cell therapy is just like, this is going to be the next big thing. And I said, well, uh, going to be, I said, it has been for the last 10 years. I mean, we've been doing this and we've had so much success and you have all these, you know, small clinical trials at, you know, universities that have been inconclusive or they're, you know, they don't have enough weight to it because they don't have quite the quantities that, that we want when it comes to a robust uh, clinical trial. But, um, but, you know, with our clinics, we've got over 20,000 people who have undergone these procedures, these regenerative medicine therapies. And uh, not only is the safety profile um, very impressive, but um, we also have seen the efficacy has been incredibly impressive. And that's not based on one singular therapy, but it's, it's a combination of everything. It's, you know, that, and this is where in medicine, I believe we kind of took a wrong turn is when we've said, well, we need things to be uh, double blinded. And uh, so we, you know, we, we want to remove uh, the human subject out of the healing response as much as possible. But um, if you if you look at that hypothesis and you say, okay, can we really predict the efficacy of medicine by removing both subjects, both the doctor and the patient from the equation? Is that really giving us a, a good foundation for how medicines work? And then we want a singular thing. So we don't want any any variables in there. But in biology, it's so much more complicated than that. And, and that's why we love functional medicine. And that's the medicine we practice here, because we can start looking at all of those factors. You know, we, we start looking at the chemical factors, the, the genome and the epigenome. We look at uh, any kind of uh, infections that are interfering with the body. We start looking at the way that, that your mindsets are, your emotional stressors, your physical traumas all the historical things that have happened throughout your life. And not only that, but you know, what you inherited from your mother, your grandmother and your father and your grandfathers. I mean, these things have a big deal um, to do with your health. And so if you can stay up to date on the breakthroughs, there's bypasses and shortcuts. Uh, my newest book, Never Stop Healing. And if you have not gotten that yet, make sure you come into the clinic. And I apologize, we've sent out several books um, to, to people in our community. And they're like, it's not signed by you, Reagan. And so uh, I know sometimes my team, they're just they're ready to get the gift sent out to you guys. And so I apologize if I haven't signed it, bring it into the office, I'll sign it for you or just to, you know, ping me and I'll make sure we get that, um, get that out to you. But, but get that book, because it's, you know, it's, it's a bypass. It's a shortcut to living a life uh, to its fullest. It gives you the key principles for eating, uh, exercise. Uh, there's peptides for every chapter. There's very specific challenges like how to breathe, uh, how to get cold exposure, uh, how to do time-restricted eating, how to fix your gut. All these things are in there. And these are some of the core breakthroughs that you can do on your own today. They're simple, they're easy, 
And it's just about putting a lifestyle in place that's going to serve you and those you love for the long run. Okay, and the final mindset in this um, that we talked about last night and that uh, Dan Sullivan's been sharing, and I, I appreciate his generosity and in allowing me to share this with the community, is uh, enjoy being a growing younger map maker. And so, you know, in his words, he says, you thoroughly enjoy being in the first human generation that is becoming increasingly smart and skillful about growing younger. So, so that's the beautiful thing is, is we're not trying to grow younger in, in uh, you know, mindset and in wisdom, because, you know, it, it's like, well, maybe we don't have to be old to be wise. Maybe that can happen at a younger age. And I think we all know people who are like that. But, um, but really, from a biological perspective, um, I have a lot of people in my life who, you know, I, I have conversations with them, and I'm like, I can't believe you're 75, or I can't believe you're 82, or, you know, and it's just incredible, because uh, your mindset is, is what's going to dictate how your biology responds. And, and there's a lot of interesting study, if you read Bruce Lipton's work, uh, The Biology of Belief. Um, I, I think he's, you know, kind of one of those pioneers. He was one of the first people to put stem cells into a Petri dish. And he realized that as he changed the environment around the stem cells, the stem cells actually changed their behavior and differentiated into something different. And then he also started looking at these immortal jellyfish and he realized, well, wow, we have, we literally have, um, these creatures on in, in planet earth. Uh, I mean, you guys know of trees, like you go uh, down into the Cedar Breaks area, and we've got some juniper trees that are 2000 years old. Um, and then you've got the immortal jellyfish who literally it, it uh, repopulates itself, it goes through a life cycle. And then once it goes through the, you know, I, I can't remember how many uh, cellular uh, rotations, you know, the Hayflick limits 40 to 50 in you know, in humans. But once the jellyfish kind of makes it through their full life cycle, the, it goes, sinks to the bottom of the ocean. And then these little cells, these little stem cells in the jellyfish just start slowly repopulating. And then that jellyfish starts to come back to life. And, and, and so they call it the immortal jellyfish. And it's pretty phenomenal if you think about that. But, but as we start becoming these, these first humans, to become skillful and smart about aging, then we start looking at life so much differently because now we look at the test that we take and we say, well, I really need to fix this issue. Um, I'm going to do something proactive. I really need to start changing my behaviors and my lifestyle. I need to take it more seriously when I eat dessert. This is Reagan speaking to Reagan. I need to be more serious about eating those crackers when I'm, you know, uh, writing or when I have, uh, you know, trying to work on a project that's mentally challenging. You know, I, there's so many things that happen uh, that, that can happen once you start saying, well, I'm going to be this, uh, this map maker. I'm going to be charting new territory. And in Utah, we are, you know, we're the pioneers and we, um, you know, we, we look at blazing new territory. And so I think this is uh, probably pretty darn fitting for many of you, because once again, we, we, uh, the death does not like to work hard. Um, it likes to, you know, go and take down that low hanging fruit. And so we got to work hard to stay resilient and we can't do this alone. So, so hopefully this gave you some insights which one of these uh, insights did you guys like the best? Um, and it looks like, oh, my book on Audible, um, I honestly just need to schedule time to get in the room. They have very specific criterias on uh, making it Audible worthy, but I will, um, I'll let you know, Ruth, as soon as I have my book on Audible and I'll let everybody know, I know that's been a request of several of you. So, so hopefully this has been interesting. Hopefully you guys took notes and you say, okay, what are you going to do? You know, once again, better sleep, exercise, diet, quarterly test, quarterly testing, fitness 50 at age 100, create a what needs fixing checklist, expand your age reversal networks. And by the way, I want to appreciate, I want to express appreciation. You guys send so many cool people to us. And uh, if you've got somebody who uh, you think would be benef benefit by our services, 
just have them call 801-582-2011 and uh, we'll take care of them. We'll, we'll help them create their own what needs fixing checklist. Number five, expand your age reversal networks. Number six, freedom, time, money, relationship, and purpose. Number seven, avoid retirement-minded people and thinking. Number eight, stronger brain, heart, muscles, lungs, and bones. Number nine, up to date on breakthroughs. And number 10, enjoy being a growing younger map maker. So we are charting new territory, no different than uh, when people left the old world and came to the new world, no different than when uh, humans first started fires and no, no different than when humans started communicating and sharing stories and sharing insights and, and really, you know, putting together uh, an English language or a language that we could all, you know, utilize and, and form words around. I mean, if you think about the amount of technologies that we have now, I mean, this is, this is the next level in um, the human progress and growth and evolution. So really appreciate you guys being part of our community. And uh, we'll see you guys very soon. Love you. And we'll see you next week. And I'll see you on Wednesday for our hacks. Bye-bye.